In the silent, icy grip of winter's darkest nights, when the world is hushed and expectant, the ancient echo of chains and the whisper of shaggy pelts creep through the alpine snows. This is the domain of Krampus, the Christmas demon. His horn silhouetted against the frosty moon. Born from pagan depths, he stalks the Yuletide, not with gifts, but with the promise of retribution. Here, the unwary who scoff at old tales find themselves facing the abyss of forgotten fears. Join us as we unravel the enigmatic shroud of this sinister warden of winter. Dare to peer into the shadows where Krampus lurks, for his story is not just a flicker of the past, but a chilling breath on the nape of your neck, whispering that not all is merry and bright. Behold Krampus, a name that sends a frigid whisper through the very bones of Alpine folklore. This demon, more than just a mere figment of ancient imagination, embodies the primordial essence of fear that clings to the darkest parts of our history. Forged from the heart of winter's grip, when nights outlasted days, he is not the creation of modern tales, but a spectre rising from the depths of pagan Europe's soul. In the frostbitten cradle of the Alps, the solstice was once a time of reverence and trepidation, where the line between the earth and the netherworld was but a delicate frost. And from this fragile boundary, Krampus emerged. Cloven hooves silently tread on the snow's crust, while his horns pierce the misty veil of winter's breath, an unyielding darkness against the pale moonlight. The ancients knew him by many tales, a creature born from the need to explain the biting cold, the unexplained disappearances, and the necessity of the life and death cycle that governed their existence. Krampus was the shadow, the punishment for those who strayed into the vices when the world was reborn in the white purity of snow. His story, woven into the cultural fabric, remains a testament to mankind's enduring dance with the diabolical entities of law. Thus, the beast known as Krampus has not merely wandered from the forgotten forests of history into the glare of modernity. He's been carried, whispered from one generation to the next, his legacy enduring, his claws entrenched in the very bedrock of Alpine mythology. For those who dare to peel back the layers of Yuletide merriment, Krampus awaits, a stark reminder of the season's ancient and ominous origins. Delve deeper into the tapestry of Krampus's story, and you find the warp and weft of it steeped in the ancient pre-Christian traditions of the Alpine regions. It was a time where the thin veil of reality could be torn asunder by the supernatural, a period when the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, was not merely an astronomical event, but a profound spiritual passage. In the shadowed valleys and snow-capped peaks, the solstice heralded a season of spectres. Villagers gathered close, fires crackling against the oppressive dark, whispering of the beings that walked the night. It was believed these entities crossed over during Raunachte, the twelve nights of Christmas, where the realms of men and spirits bled into one another. Krampus, it is said, was one of these beings, a vestige of ancient pagan lore, where nature was neither kind nor forgiving. This was a time when myth and the material world were indistinguishable, the Alpine people saw Krampus's visage in the gnarled trees, heard his growls in the winter gales, and felt his presence in the heart of the untamed wilderness that surrounded them. Rituals of great import marked these times. Men adorned in furs and masks, embodying the very demons they feared, roamed the villages. They were the embodiment of the dark forces at play, a human mimicry of Krampus's reputed form, meant to ward off evil spirits, or perhaps to commune with them, a practice some whispered was as old as the mountains themselves. 
these primal traditions were not mere superstition, but a way for the ancients to make sense of the brutal world they inhabited. Krampus was a central figure in these rites, a dark force to be appeased, to ensure that the sun would return, that spring would come, and that the cycle of life would continue. It was a dance with danger, a flirtation with the very essence of fear. His legend, born of this ancient pagan backdrop, was more than the sum of its parts. It was an integral thread in the societal fabric, a reminder of a time when to step out of line was to invite the wrath of the unseen and the misunderstood. In the darkest of alpine winter nights, the ancients felt the breath of Krampus on their necks, a shiver down the spine in a season dominated by death, waiting for rebirth. Thus, Krampus was not simply a tale to frighten children, but a relic of a bygone era when the forces of nature and the supernatural were indistinguishable. In every crackling fire's shadow, every icy gust, the alpine forebears felt his presence, knew his fury, and respected the ancient pact between the darkness and the light. Where the hearth glows and the children dream, Saint Nicholas traverses the winter sky, a symbol of generosity and goodwill. Yet in the cold shadows just beyond the fire's reach, his dark counterpart prowls. Here, Krampus reigns, not with a sack full of toys, but with chains and bells that clang with a chilling harbinger of punitive fates. From the depths of Alpine legend, Saint Nicholas emerged as the kindly patron saint of children, a revered figure swathed in red, bestowing gifts upon the deserving. His very essence is the embodiment of Yuletide joy, a beacon of light that cuts through the winter's desolation. But there is no light without shadow, no kindness without the threat of retribution, and thus Krampus exists. In stark contrast to St. Nicholas's benevolence, Krampus serves as the arbiter of moral rectitude, a beastly form brandishing rods and chains, ready to snatch away the mischievous. His role is not to reward, but to admonish a task he carries out with terrifying gusto. He is the whispered threat in every warning tale, the horned figure lurking in the corner of every child's eye come Christmas. Where St. Nicholas would leave a present, Krampus would leave a warning, or worse, carry the wicked off to his shadowy realm. Their relationship is not one of mere opposition, but a complex interplay of good cop, bad cop, played out in the cosmic theater of folklore. Together, they weave a narrative that balances the scales of justice in a world where good deeds are celebrated and bad deeds are not just punished, but met with spectral dread. The duo of St. Nicholas and Krampus is deeply etched into the cultural consciousness representing the enduring human preoccupation with justice and consequence. Their tales, passed down through the ages, are imbued with lessons of morality and the stark outcomes that follow our choices. The tale of Krampus takes on a life of its own. He is not just a figment to scare, but a necessary force that ensures the social order, a balance to the kindness of St. Nicholas, without which the light of generosity might not shine as brightly. And so, Krampus persists, St. Nicholas's eternal opposite, a dark symbol that the scales of holiday cheer are always precariously balanced by the heavy hand of retribution. In every corner where a child whispers their wishes to St. Nicholas, the echo of Krampus's chains serves as a grim reminder that not all Christmas spirits come bearing gifts. In the darkest reaches of our mythologies, creatures lurk, born from mankind's universal dance with fear and morality. Krampus, with his cloven hooves and feral snarl, is but one of the legion, a shadow cast across cultures, morphing under different guises, yet bound by the same ancient archetypes. Peer into the Norse legends, and you may glimpse his kinship with Loki, the trickster god, whose schemes knew no bounds. Like Krampus, Loki was often seen as a necessary evil, a force that challenged the gods and humans alike, forcing them to confront uncomfortable truths. Venture into Slavic folklore, and there you will find Chernobog, the black god, the embodiment of dark forces, mirroring Krampus's own domain over the darker aspects of the human psyche. In these tales, the winter's cold breath is Chernobog's whisper, a chill that speaks of chaos and upheaval. Look to the east, 
to the Kalikanseroi of Greek tradition, mischievous goblins that surface during the 12 days of Christmas, causing havoc much like the terror Krampus inflicts on those who have earned his gaze. Their unruly antics serve as a wild, untamed counterpart to the more orderly conduct encouraged during the festive season. Even the witch Baba Yaga, in her hut, perched on chicken legs, shares a spectral thread with Krampus. She too rules over her domain with a stern judgment, a hag of Slavic tales that does not coddle those who stray into her path, much like Krampus does not suffer the naughty to go unpunished. And yet, Krampus is distinct in his singular role tied to the Christmas tradition, a time of cheer and giving. Unlike these other beings who may roam freely throughout the year, Krampus's power waxes as the nights grow longer, his yearly visit a darkly anticipated counterbalance to the season's joy. These mythological cousins, while diverse in origin and nature, share a common lineage in the realm of legend, a family of dark reflections to humanity's more hopeful beliefs. Each culture's demon, trickster, or bogeyman, is a facet of the same unyielding truth, that for every light, there must be shadow, for every act of kindness, a potential consequence, and for every Saint Nicholas, a Krampus, waiting just out of sight, with a growl like the grinding of gears, deep in the folklore that binds the human spirit across time and tradition. Names hold power, a truth no less evident than in the case of the entity known as Krampus. Etched into the annals of history, his very name is a chilling whisper from the past, a term born of darkness and olden tales. Krampus, derived from the old High German Krampen, means claw, a word that conjures images of a creature lurking in the abyss, its talons poised to snatch the unwary. In the silent, bone-chilling nights of winter, when the snow lies heavy upon the alpine slopes, the name Krampus resonates with a foreboding significance. Its guttural pronunciation is akin to a growl, a sound not spoken lightly, for it is said that to utter it is to invite his gaze. And in the shadowed recesses where the fireside's light cannot reach, one can almost sense the curling of claws, scraping softly against the earth. The linguistic lineage of Krampus weaves through the cultural consciousness like a dark thread. It is more than a name, it is a portent, a harbinger of the dread that December nights might hold. The claw is not merely a part of the beast, it is symbolic of his essence, a primal terror that seizes and rends, that tears away the veneer of civility and leaves raw the truth of nature's more sinister whims. In ancient times, names were believed to be a form of invocation, and Krampus is thus an incantation of olden power, a calling forth of the repressed and forbidden aspects of human nature. His name is not simply a label, but a key, unlocking the deeper fears that lie coiled in the human soul. The significance of Krampus transcends the auditory. It is an echo of the collective unease that has long accompanied the fading of the light. The etymology of Krampus is a journey into the heart of folklore itself, where words are more than sounds. They are the embodiment of our darkest tales, and Krampus is the epitome of such ancient stories, a name that resonates with the ominous tenor of cautionary whispers from time immemorial. To speak of Krampus is to summon the essence of winter's darkest hours, an invocation that calls forth the creature from his mythic domain, clawed hand outstretched, ready to remind all of the old ways, of the time when names were born of fear and respect for the shadows that dwell just beyond the firelight. When the December wind howls with a piercing cry through the alpine valleys, it carries with it a whisper of ancient dread. This is the harbinger of Krampusnacht, the night when the boundary between the worlds of the living and the spectral grows perilously thin. On this eve, when shadows stretch long and the hearth's glow battles the encroaching frost, it is said that Krampus emerges from the Stygian corners of the old world. Legend speaks of Krampusnacht as a time of reckoning. It is on this longest night, when the cold bites to the bone, that Krampus is believed to roam. With chains clanking morosely, a sound that chills the soul, he seeks out the wicked, the unruly, those steeped in naughtiness far beyond the playful misdeeds of children. His visit is no silent passage, no mere footstep in the snow. It is a tempest, a commotion of bells and growls, of dark laughter that echoes through the frost-bitten air. 
parents whisper tales to wide-eyed offspring of how Krampus would rattle the windows, tap on the walls, and with eyes that hold the gloom of winter nights, peer into the hearts of men. On Krampusnacht, the wicked are gifted not with coal but with terror. Stories tell of Krampus's bag, woven from the night itself, wherein the most defiant of souls are swept away, spirited to a realm of shadow, to atone for their misdeeds in ways only whispered about in fearful tones. Such tales are steeped in the lore of countless winters, passed down through generations huddled close in the candlelight. On Krampusnacht, the barrier is not just crossed, but shattered by the force of an ancient entity, one who does not forgive, who does not forget. The clang of his chains and the guttural depths of his growls serve as a somber lullaby for those who believe the darkness held no deeper terror than the absence of light. And so Krampusnacht endures, a tradition etched into the Alpine consciousness, where the wild winter is not just a season but a state of being. It is a night where the foolish and the brave alike lock their doors, but know deep down that timber and bolt mean little to a creature of such primordial essence. For on this night, Krampus reigns, a spectre of olden terrors, ensuring that the night of his visitation is engraved forever in the annals of the haunted winter sky. Within the darkest ink of history's pages, there lurks a figure both grim and ghastly. This fiend, as chronicled by petrified souls through the ages, is no mere spectre of subtlety, but a grotesquerie that defies the natural order. Envision, if you dare, a creature of towering stature, hunched and horrid. His body, a matted pelt of what seems like the blackest goat fur, shrouds him in nightfall's embrace. From his skull sprout twisted horns, spiraling upwards, ensnaring the screams of the damned. Krampus's face is a contorted mask of horror, with a lolling, serpentine tongue that writhes with a life of its own, tasting the fear that hangs heavy in the air. Artists of yore, their hands trembling as they worked, have etched his likeness into woodcuts and paintings, a tradition of terror that transcends the boundary of mere folklore. Krampus's eyes, glowing like coals plucked from Hades' own furnace, are windows not to the soul, but to a chasm of despair. His gnarled fingers, tipped with talons sharp as the alpine chill, are instruments of torment, poised to snatch those who have strayed from the path of righteousness. Through the generations, as fireside tales became the chilling spine of cultural memory, Krampus's appearance took on new, ever more horrifying forms. Some legends speak of a forked tail thrashing in unholy delight as he advances upon his quarry. Others recount the dreadful sound of his hoofbeats, a singular heavy clop akin to the tolling of a funeral bell. In regions where the snow blankets the world in silent white, parents would frighten their offspring with depictions of Krampus on faded parchment, warning of a creature whose very essence is anathema to the warmth of life. This spectre of pre-Christian Alpine myth remains a figure not of whimsy, but of warning, embodying the primordial fear that beneath the veneer of civilization lurks a force untamed, unyielding, and unfathomably sinister. Thus, the portrayal of Krampus stands not merely as a character of law, but as a manifestation of ancient terrors, a visage crafted from the very fabric of human trepidation. To look upon him is to gaze into an abyss, to confront the stark reality that some legends are born from truths too chilling for daylight's comfort. In the shadow-laden valleys of the Alps, where the wind whispers secrets long forgotten, the tales of Krampus stir amidst the hushed tones of the elders. These are not mere stories to coax children into slumber, but chilling accounts that have seeped through the cracks of reality, leaving a taint of dread upon the listener's soul. One legend that chills the marrow of those who hear it is the tale of the lost child of Grodig. It is said that on a Krampusnacht shadowed by a moonless sky, a defiant young boy, scoffing at the warnings of his kin, found himself ensnared by the call of the wild winds. With a heart swollen with hubris, he ventured into the darkness. The villagers found naught the next morn but his footprints leading into the forest, abruptly ending as though the earth itself had devoured him. Whispers spoke of a figure, horned and hulking, seen upon the edge of the woods, his laughter a sound that fractured the comfort of hearthfires. Then there is the unnerving account from the frostbitten village of Holstadt, 
where a grandmother recalls a night of terror that has clawed at her sanity for decades. Her tale speaks of a night when Krampus wrapped his gnarled knuckles upon her window pane. She recounts the steam of his breath fogging the glass as his silhouette loomed like a portent of doom. To this day, she swears that her adherence to virtue alone shielded her from being spirited away to an infernal fate. And what of the lumberjacks who, in their solitude, whisper of a companion they neither welcome nor acknowledge by name? They share amongst themselves a legend of a peer who strayed into wickedness, of how one night his cries echoed through the pines. Come dawn, all that remained was an axe, its blade embedded in a tree trunk and hoof prints encircling the clearing, a silent testament to a sinister visitation. Such stories are the currency of caution in these parts, told and retold, each iteration a grim reminder of the ancient pact between man and myth. The elders say that Krampus does not merely hunt the wrongdoer, but serves as a sentinel at the threshold of order and chaos, his very existence a parable of balance, a moral reckoning clothed in the garments of legend. These folk tales, handed down through the ages, are not simply the echoes of old fears, but serve as a living chronicle of an enduring belief. The oral traditions bind communities with a shared understanding that some darkness is too profound to be caged in the written word, that the essence of Krampus is woven into the very ether of the Alpine Nights, a force ancient, relentless, and forever watching. To this day, the children of the Alpine regions are whispered cautionary tales that chill their spirits more than the cold ever could. These are not mere ghost stories, but ancestral warnings, rooted deeply in the legend of Krampus, the fearsome entity tethered to the fate of the young and the wayward. The spectre of Krampus is especially entwined with the lives of children. It is they, with their innocence teetering on the precipice of the moral choices of life, who attract the attention of this horned adjudicator. Consider the tale from a village barely clinging to the side of the Drow Valley, where children are told of the unseen guest at the Yuletide feast. It is said that Krampus peers through the frosted panes, his eyes searching for the reflection of malice in the hearts of children. Should he find it, the festive air turns to one of dread, for his visitation is said to be marked by gifts of coal, dark as the night itself, and the haunting echo of chains dragging, a portent of the fate awaiting the impure. The tales often depict Krampus with a basket strapped to his back from which the cries of the damned can sometimes be heard. It is said to be woven not from wicker, but from the branches of the remorseless night. Children who listen to their baser instincts fear ending up within this grim cradle, spirited away to atone for their misdeeds in realms unspeakable. In a world where the lines of right and wrong are as stark as the contrast between the snow and the evergreen, Krampus embodies the consequence of choices made. The Alpine folklore rich with these narratives imparts lessons that bind communities, instilling an understanding that every action, good or ill, is seen by unseen eyes and recompense is always at hand. Krampus is a stark reminder that the innocent must remain so lest they draw the gaze of the ancient disciplinarian whose lessons are as unforgiving as the winter's night. The tales of winter demons, we should note, are not unique to the Alpine region. They stretch far beyond the Alpine snows, reaching into the heart of many cultures. These tales, though separated by vast oceans and ancient tongues, share a shadowy figure akin to Krampus the holiday devil who haunts the festive season with a message of retribution. Venture far to the east, where Mother Russia endures her own wintry embrace. There, amidst the howling winds and the frozen steppes, whispers of dead Moroz's companion Morozko chill the hearts of children. Known to freeze the indolent and reward the industrious, this frost-bitten spectre shares Krampus's dual nature of reward and retribution delivering icy punishment to those lacking in spirit and diligence. Cross the frosted waves to the shores of Scandinavia and you'll encounter the Eulabuk, a Yuletide goat whose origins are enmeshed with Thor's mighty chariot pullers. Unlike the benevolent gift givers of the season, the Yulebuk was said to demand offerings and woe betide those who found themselves empty-handed. Its horns, much like Krampus's, 
signaled a capricious judgment, a reminder that the giving of the season was not without its darker demands. Even in the sun-baked climes of Italy, the Christmas witch La Befania, though often benevolent, carries with her a warning. She sweeps through homes not just to bestow sweets upon the well-mannered, but to leave a lump of coal for those found wanting. The parallel is unmistakable. A counterpart to the Alpine Krampus, both serving as stern overseers of moral conduct during a time of merriment. Across the Atlantic, in the lands where the ancient Mayan civilizations once flourished, there exists the legend of the Kamazots, a bat-like deity associated with night, death and sacrifice. Though not bound to the festivities of winter, the essence of Kamazots' myth weaves a similar tale of darkness juxtaposed against the light, a guardian of the balance, not unlike the role Krampus plays against the backdrop of St. Nicholas's joy. These beings, though varying in visage and vessel, are threaded by a common strand. Their presence serves as a chilling reminder that in the time of celebration, one must also respect the ancient laws of balance and behavior. The holiday devils are not merely monsters of myth. They are the keepers of a primordial order, ensuring that as the year dies and is reborn, so too is the cycle of consequence and reward. These winter figures loom large in our collective unconscious. Their stories interwoven with the fabric of the season, a global echo of the haunting presence of Krampus and his kin. In the Middle Ages, a period shadowed by the imposing edifice of the church and the rigid structure of feudal society, the figure of Krampus stood as a stark contrast to the emerging Christian norms. This cloven-hoofed harbinger of punishment with his pagan roots found himself at odds with the religious and political powers of the time. Krampus's origins are deeply entwined with pre-Christian Alpine traditions, possibly linked to ancient Germanic and Norse folklore. He bears resemblances to figures such as the fauns and satyrs of Greco-Roman mythology, embodying aspects of nature and wilderness that were often at odds with Christian ideals. In these pagan times, such figures were part of rituals that celebrated the cycles of nature and the change of seasons. As Christianity spread across Europe, the church viewed Krampus, with his horned visage and demonic attributes, as a direct challenge to its doctrine. The church sought to suppress such pagan imagery, seeing it as a vestige of an older belief system that threatened the Christian moral order. Edicts and sermons often condemned the Krampus celebrations as a mockery of Christian values and a remnant of heathen rituals. Simultaneously, secular authorities also viewed the raucous and often unruly Krampus festivities as a threat to the social order. The public performances, where individuals dressed as Krampus roamed the streets, were seen as acts of rebellion against the established order, a subversion of the societal norms enforced by the ruling class. These celebrations, with their roots in pre-Christian traditions, were a form of resistance to the imposition of a new cultural and religious paradigm. Despite attempts to suppress it, the Krampus tradition persisted, its roots too deeply embedded in the cultural psyche of the Alpine regions. The legend adapted, surviving the centuries as a testament to the resilience of folklore and the enduring need for cultural and spiritual expression outside the bounds of mainstream religion and societal norms. Beyond the realms of public life and into the secretive world of the occult, Krampus took on a different significance. In the occult, Krampus is not merely a folkloric figure, but a symbol of the primal, untamed forces of nature and the human psyche. Occult practices, often conducted in secrecy due to their own clash with mainstream religious beliefs, saw in Krampus an archetype of rebellion against societal and religious constraints. In various grimoires and esoteric texts, Krampus appears as a guardian of hidden knowledge, a figure to be invoked in rituals aimed at exploring the shadowy depths of the human experience. These rituals, some drawing from ancient pagan traditions, sought to harness the symbolic power of Krampus as a means of achieving spiritual insight or altering consciousness. The figure of Krampus, with his horned head raised towards the dark sky, became emblematic of a path less travelled in the spiritual journey, a guide through the realms of mystery and the unknown. In these clandestine gatherings and ritualistic practices, Krampus symbolised a connection to an older, wilder world, a remnant of a time when the lines between the human and the supernatural were blurred. Thus, in the history of Europe, 
Krampus stands as a bridge between the old and the new, the pagan and the Christian, the mundane and the mystical. His endurance through centuries of cultural and religious change is a testament to the multifaceted nature of folklore and its capacity to embody the deepest fears, desires and rebellions of humanity. In the realm where history, myth and the occult intersect, Krampus remains a potent symbol, a reminder of the enduring power of the ancient stories and beliefs that continue to shape our understanding of the world. In the heart of these alpine towns, as the chill of December sets in, a century-old tradition stirs to life. The Krampuslauf, or Krampus Run, is not just a local festivity, it's a living echo of ancient rites. These parades, now integral to the winter season in regions across Austria, Bavaria and beyond, trace their origins to pre-Christian winter celebrations, later intertwining with Christian traditions as St. Nicholas's foreboding counterpart. Historical records suggest that the Krampus tradition, linked to older pagan rituals, was adapted into Christian practices around the 17th century. Today, these parades have evolved from simple village events into elaborate spectacles, drawing crowds from around the globe. The Krampuslauf is a sensorial experience. Participants, often local residents, dress in elaborate costumes with towering horns and shaggy pelts, emulating the fearsome Krampus. The sound of their chains and bells, the sight of their grotesque masks, and the aroma of the winter air all combine to create an atmosphere steeped in tradition and mystery. It's common to see Krampus figures brandishing birch branches, symbolizing the punishment of the wicked, and sometimes dragging cages or sacks, a nod to the legend of taking away naughty children. These events are more than mere tourist attractions. They are vibrant expressions of cultural identity. Each parade is a tapestry of local history, folklore and community spirit. They serve as a reminder of the region's deep-rooted beliefs and customs, where the lines between the past and present blur, bringing folklore to life in the streets of modern towns. The Krampuslauf, in its modern incarnation, bridges generations, preserving a piece of cultural heritage while continually adapting to contemporary sensibilities. As the sound of Krampus's approach echoes through the Alpine winters, it brings with it a reminder of the time-honored dance between fear and fascination, a dance that continues to captivate and intrigue. The tradition of Krampus, once rooted in the Alpine regions of Europe, has transcended its geographical origins to become a global phenomenon. This spread is largely attributed to the movement of people from Europe to other parts of the world, carrying with them their customs and folklore. As a result, the chilling legend of Krampus has found new life in far-off lands. The journey of Krampus across the globe began with European immigrants who brought their traditions to the Americas and other continents. In these new settings, the story of Krampus mingled with local customs, creating unique variations of the ancient legend. In the United States and Canada, for example, cities with significant populations of European descent started hosting their own Krampusnacht celebrations. These events often incorporate elements of North American culture, reshaping the Krampus legend within a new cultural context. In urban centers like Cleveland and Philadelphia, Krampus has become a feature of the holiday season, with mask-making workshops and parades attracting large crowds. These celebrations differ from the traditional Alpine Krampus runs, but maintain the core elements of the myth, a fearsome creature punishing the naughty. The adaptation of Krampus in these diverse environments illustrates the enduring appeal of folklore and its ability to evolve while preserving its fundamental essence. Moreover, the spread of Krampus's legend is a testament to the power of storytelling and cultural exchange. As communities blend and cultures interact, myths like Krampus take on new meanings, resonating with a broad audience and gaining a new level of relevance. Today, Krampus is more than a regional folklore it has become a part of global culture, a symbol of the darker aspects of the holiday season that appeals to a universal audience. Its expansion across continents and cultures is a reminder that some legends, regardless of their origin, hold a universal appeal that transcends boundaries and unites people in their shared fascination with the mythic and the mysterious. 
Krampus's journey from alpine folklore to mainstream pop culture is marked by a significant evolution in his portrayal in films, books, and television. The earliest cinematic appearances of Krampus were brief and often shrouded in mystery, mirroring his enigmatic role in folklore. However, as the interest in horror and fantasy genres grew, Krampus began to feature more prominently in both European and American films. The character's portrayal varied, sometimes staying true to the traditional menacing figure, while other times being adapted to suit a modern narrative. One of the significant turning points for Krampus in pop culture came with the release of the 2015 American horror comedy film Krampus, directed by Michael Doherty. This film brought Krampus into the limelight, presenting him as a central character with a complex backstory. The movie's success led to a surge in Krampus's popularity, inspiring a variety of media portrayals. In literature, Krampus has been the subject of numerous books and graphic novels. These range from horror stories to children's books, each adding layers to his character and expanding his mythos. Authors have explored Krampus from various angles, sometimes painting him as a misunderstood figure, other times as a symbol of ancient justice. Television too has seen its share of Krampus representations, from appearances in holiday specials to being a central character in episodes of horror and fantasy series. These appearances often play with the contrast between Krampus's traditional role as a punisher of naughty children and more nuanced interpretations that delve into his origins and motivations. As a result of this widespread representation in media, Krampus has transcended his origins as a purely sinister figure. He has become a multifaceted character that resonates with audiences for different reasons, fear, curiosity, or even empathy. This evolution reflects not just a change in storytelling techniques, but also a deeper cultural fascination with exploring the darker, more complex aspects of folklore and mythology. Krampus's enduring popularity in pop culture signifies a broader trend, the reimagining of folklore to reflect contemporary values and sensibilities, proving that even the oldest tales can find new life in the modern imagination. The commercialization of Krampus, once a primarily European folklore figure, reflects a fascinating shift in cultural trends and consumer interests. Over the years, Krampus has transitioned from an obscure mythological character to a unique and increasingly popular element in holiday merchandise, especially in the United States and Europe. One of the earliest forms of Krampus merchandise can be traced back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries with the advent of Krampus postcards known as Krampus Karten. These postcards, popular in Austria and Germany, often featured humorous or frightening images of Krampus, sometimes pursuing children or interacting with Saint Nicholas. The tradition of these cards declined in the mid-20th century, but has seen a resurgence in recent years as part of the broader revival of Krampus in popular culture. In contemporary merchandising, Krampus has found a place in a wide array of products. Greeting cards featuring Krampus imagery have regained popularity, often as a tongue-in-cheek alternative to traditional holiday cards. These cards sometimes blend modern design elements with the classic, eerie imagery associated with the character, appealing to a market looking for unconventional and edgy holiday themes. Additionally, the figure of Krampus has been adopted into various forms of holiday decorations. From ornaments featuring the classic horned figure to elaborate Krampus-themed Christmas stockings, these items cater to a growing interest in incorporating darker, more folklore-centric elements into holiday decor. The influence of Krampus has also extended into the realm of confectionaries. In some European countries, particularly in the Alpine regions where the legend originated, chocolate figures of Krampus are produced for the holiday season, similar to chocolate Santas. These chocolates often feature detailed molds of Krampus, complete with horns and chains, offering a playful yet slightly sinister twist to holiday sweets. The apparel industry has not been left behind in capitalizing on the Krampus trend. T-shirts, hoodies, and even socks adorned with various depictions of Krampus are available, often featuring art ranging from traditional interpretations to modern, stylized renditions. This clothing allows enthusiasts to display their fascination with Krampus and folklore in general. In the collectibles market, there has been a rise in Krampus-themed items such as action figures, dolls, and even elaborate handcrafted sculptures. 
These collectibles often showcase the craftsmanship and attention to detail that is deeply rooted in the traditions of the regions where Krampus is celebrated. The commercialization of Krampus, while contributing to the character's global recognition, also sparks a debate about the dilution of cultural traditions for profit. However, for many enthusiasts and collectors, these items represent a way to connect with and celebrate a unique aspect of cultural folklore, blending ancient traditions with modern consumer culture. For centuries, the tale of Krampus has served as a chilling counterbalance to the saintly generosity of Saint Nicholas. It's a narrative steeped in the need for equilibrium, the yin and yang of the human condition. As we dress our modern holiday in garlands and lights, we inadvertently evoke the ancient practice of celebrating light by acknowledging the dark. In contemporary times, the Krampus tradition has seen a resurgence, a curious blend of the old and the new. In cities far from the creature's mythical origins, Krampus walks again, not through snow-muted streets, but amidst the concrete and neon. Here, Krampus parades have taken a peculiar turn, becoming part performance art, part cultural statement, with elaborate costumes that push the boundaries of the imagination. The internet has spun Krampus into a global phenomenon, where tales and images are shared not by the fireside, but across the digital expanse. Communities around the world now convene to celebrate this figure not solely as a harbinger of punishment, but as a symbol of cultural heritage and even rebellion against the saccharine commercialization of holiday traditions. Despite this burgeoning popularity, some fear that the essence of Krampus is being diluted, his terrifying visage softened into a mascot of mischief rather than a genuine spectre of admonition. Yet others argue that Krampus has always been a creature of transformation, his story one of adaptation and survival. Moreover, the way in which Krampus is celebrated has been influenced by cultural exchanges and societal attitudes toward folklore and tradition. Some regions have seen a renewed interest in pre-Christian customs, viewing Krampus as a connection to a past that seems increasingly relevant in a world searching for identity amidst the homogenizing forces of globalization. Krampus festivals and runs continue to thrive, but they do so with a growing consciousness of their role in a world where folklore intersects with tourism and entertainment. The figure of Krampus, once a nightmarish warning whispered in a child's ear, has become a complex symbol of cultural identity, community pride, and a touchstone for those seeking to connect with the more untamed aspect of the human spirit. The future of Krampus is an unwritten chapter in the annals of myth. As long as there are those who seek to keep the legend alive, the clatter of his hooves and the whisper of his chains will resonate through the ages. A reminder that within the heart of tradition, there lurks a wild and untamable tale, forever changing. Just like the shadowy figure at its center. Beneath the twinkling lights of modern Christmastide, a battle rages. Silent as the fall of snow, yet fierce as a winter storm. It is a clash not of armies, but of ideologies. The commercial against the cultural. The authentic essence of Krampus caught in the crossfire. In the chill of the marketplace, the image of Krampus has been seized, packaged and sold. Plush toys with horns, comic books with his visage and movies that twist his legend into palatable narratives for mass consumption, the once dreaded figure has been sanitized, a spectre made safe for shoppers and revelers. Where once children trembled at the thought of his approach, now they clutch to soft figures meant to resemble him, stripped of the old fear he once inspired. Yet in the shadow of this commercial onslaught, a murmur of resistance echoes. Purists and traditionalists stand firm, guardians of the old ways, holding torches aloft not just to illuminate the path of Krampus parades, but to light the way back to authenticity. They craft their masks with painstaking detail. Every horn carved and every hide stitched echoes the folklore of yesteryears, resisting the siren call of profit. In the heartland where Krampus roamed, the memory of his true purpose endures. It's in the clinking of chains and the deep guttural growls that resonate through Alpine villages during Krampusnacht. These communities hold fast to the frightening aspects of the creature, ensuring that the terror the admonition against misdeeds and complacency is not lost. Historically, Krampus was not a figure designed for merchandise or light-hearted holiday films. 
he was a warning, a symbol of a deeper, more profound justice. As such, efforts to preserve his legacy focus on education, on telling the stories as they were told in hushed tones centuries ago, passing down the true nature of the Yuletide demon from one generation to the next. The debate rages on, each Christmas season bringing its own set of challenges and conversations. For every Krampus cookie cutter or jolly holiday sweater emblazoned with his image, there is a call to remember, a plea to return to the roots that made him a figure of legend. Yet Krampus, ever enigmatic, continues to stride through the ages, his form morphing under the weight of new meanings and commercial agendas. But his spirit, wild, untamed, and ancient, whispering of a time when fear danced hand in hand with respect, and myths were not merely stories, but lessons etched into the very fabric of society. In contemporary times, the role of Krampus extends beyond the storybook image of a horned beast punishing the wicked. Psychologists might argue that his very existence taps into the collective unconscious, a shared well of archetypes that Carl Jung suggested forms the substrate from which all myths emerge. Krampus embodies the shadow self, a necessary aspect of the psyche that one must confront to achieve wholeness. In the festive season, a time of heightened emotions and reflection, his story encourages a confrontation with our darker selves, a psychological reckoning as the year draws to its end. Socially, Krampus navigates the landscape as an enforcer of community morals, a role that has not waned with time. The tradition of Krampuslauf, where townsfolk don costumes to become the creature itself, serves as a modern enactment of social catharsis. For a moment, the beast is real, and the boundary between man and myth blurs. The revelers who take to the streets embrace a communal ritual of fear, a dance with the devil that reinforces societal norms under the guise of holiday fun. The Krampus legend, then, is not just a story told by the fire. It is an active participant in the holiday narrative, a psychological and social actor that demands we examine the complexities of human nature. It encourages a collective introspection, a look into the cultural mirror to face the monsters lurking in our shared histories. His chains may clank in the echoes of medieval dungeons, but they also resonate in the heartbeats of those who carry his myth forward, a resonance felt in the very bones of the social fabric. As the festive lights flicker and the cold wind whispers, Krampus remains a testament to the enduring power of folklore to shape, to challenge, and to define the human experience. In the deepening gloom of a world ever-changing, the ancient echo of Krampus's hooves resonates through the mists of time, finding new heirs in a new generation. The winds whisper of change, and with it, the spectre of this age-old tradition must evolve or risk being lost in the shadows of oblivion. To captivate the minds that swim in the streams of digital realities, Krampus's tale is ripe for reimagining. The primal fear he embodies, the raw edge of his mythology, could be sculpted anew to grip the modern soul. Imagine, if you will, virtual landscapes where the pursuit by Krampus becomes a visceral experience, an augmented reality game where one must race against the night to escape his grasp. Here, the dread and adrenaline are real, the lessons of morality woven through a tapestry of interactive storytelling. The narrative itself might transform, not merely content to frighten children into good behavior, but to challenge the adult mind. Picture Krampus as an avatar of environmental vengeance, rising from the heart of a dying planet to confront the folly of humankind. His chains could clank with the weight of pollution, his horns adorned with the relics of species lost to extinction. Such a Krampus does not just chase the individual, but looms over humanity as a whole, a dire warning made manifest. Yet, even as his image shifts, the core of what Krampus represents must remain. His tale will always be a dance of darkness and light, a creature born from the need to recognize that within the human heart lies the capacity for both profound kindness and unspeakable cruelty. This eternal truth is what ensures the Krampus legend endures, for it speaks to every generation, adapting to the morality and fears of the age. Future festivities might see the integration of Krampus in new forms of communal celebrations, where the lore is imparted through immersive theatrical experiences. The lines between audience and performer blurred to engage with the myth on a personal level. In these spaces, each person might come to face their own version of Krampus, 
a reflection of the shadows they carry within. As the world spins on, the tale of Krampus remains ever malleable, a myth ready to be molded by the hands of those who dare to imagine and reimagine. From whispered legends to the stark glare of screens, Krampus waits, ready to step into the light of a new era, his story forever interwoven with the fabric of cultural fear and fascination. In the stillness of a winter's night, where the whispers of the past mingle with the breath of the present, the essence of Krampus stirs, a chilling testament to the multifaceted nature of the human psyche. He is the shadowy silhouette that lingers at the edge of the firelight, a reminder of the ancient fears that yet cling to the modern mind. His chains rattle with the echoes of a thousand years, binding him to us as a symbol of consequence and a keeper of the balance between right and wrong. Today, Krampus is not just a relic of folklore, he is a mirror, darkly reflecting our understanding of morality, punishment and redemption. Krampus endures not merely as a figure of yuletide terror, but as a spectral guardian of tradition in an age where the old ways risk being devoured by the bright, insatiable moors of modernity. His legacy whispers a cautionary tale of the human condition, of our eternal dance with our darker selves, and the timeless need for tales that teach, terrify and transcend. As long as there are nights that close in with the promise of winter's touch and hearts that beat faster in the dark, the legend of Krampus will continue to unfurl. His story a dark ribbon winding through the essence of our collective human journey.